Hi everyone, welcome to the session of our web series Fireside Chat with Champions, in which we interview global business leaders, asking them crowdsourced questions relevant to the biggest challenge we face today, COVID and its impact on various aspects of business and society, and the way we can steer ourselves in current uncertainties. Today we have a special guest with us, Luca Vere, co-founder and CEO of Prophecy. Prophecy is the inventor of the world's most advanced neuromorphic vision systems. Inspired by the human vision, Prophecy's technology uses a patented sensor design and AI algorithms that mimic the eye and brain to reveal what was invisible until now using standard frame-based technologies. Prophecy's machine vision systems open new potential in areas such as autonomous vehicles, industrial automation, IoT, security, surveillance, augmented reality, virtual reality. One of the early application was in medical devices that restore vision to the blind. Prophecy raised $68 million till now and has 51 international patents and has awards as respected as World Economic Forum's Technology Pioneer, Forbes Top 100 Best Innovators, Gartner Cool Vendor, Fortune 50 companies leading the AI revolution to name a few. Luca has extensive international management experience and a background in the automotive and electronic industries. His experience include project management, product management, marketing, and business development. Roles he has worked in past for Schneider Electric, Toyota, and Imperial College of London. Luca holds a double first class MSc in physics, electronics, and industrial engineering from Politecnico di Milano and Ecole Centrale. I'm sorry in case the pronunciation was not right. I am not actually uh, from Europe. <laughs> and an MBA from INSTE. He has recently bestowed with Francina Award by Government of Italy from where he belongs. Thanks, Luca, for accepting our invitation. I would request you to let our viewers know a bit more about you and your current interest and activities. Floor is yours, Luca. Thank you. Thank you, Deepak, for this uh, fantastic introduction. Yes, so um, I'm Italian. Um, I'm an engineer by the ground, and uh, I studied at the Politecnico di Milano, uh, physics and um, electrical engineering. Then I spent some time doing research in photonics at the Imperial College uh, after joining um, uh, Toyota as, uh, as a test engineer in Japan, and then moving to uh, Schneider Electric, where I spent several years working uh, across uh, different uh, job responsibilities, marketing, uh, product development, uh, business development um, uh, in Germany, in Japan, in France. And then, um, actually, uh, five years ago, I, six years ago, I, I decided to go for an MBA because I wanted to take uh, a sabbatical leave, uh, essentially, to, to think about uh, my next step. And, you know, when you are part of a big organization, it's always difficult to do, to move this, to do this, uh, uh, this entre entrepreneurial step, right? Because you are always... Uh, in your comfort zone, uh, you get your salary, etc. You get promoted, uh, you do new things. And uh, I was at, at that time working in a very, very good environment with great people, etc. So uh, that's the reason why I decided, okay, let's, let's take a sabbatical and then, uh, and then uh, in this way I will have time actually to think, to find the proper opportunity uh, and to jump on it. And this is actually what luckily happened because I... Uh, during my MBA, uh, early 2014, I met by chance a group of uh, uh, researchers from the Vision Institute, which is a which is an institute based in Paris that is developing uh, is doing a lot of research around the the human eye, mostly related to understanding pathologies of the eye, and uh, in particular, the group of research I came across was actually working on this uh, silicon retina technology some of them actually for more than 25 years. And the objective, uh, the goal for them was actually to build a, a, a silicon model of the human eye. Uh, initially, they started this research to better understand the eye. But eventually, uh, this piece of silicon, this chip, was actually delivering uh, extremely interesting uh, uh, performance uh, that, uh, that actually made the same chip uh, potentially uh, interesting for some applications. And when we, came out, when we, uh, we, we met each other, they were essentially looking for somebody to, uh, to start putting together a company, business plan, etc. And, uh, and then the perfect match 
I was there because I was just uh, doing my MBA and, uh, and I was looking for this opportunity. And then uh, actually, even before uh, ending the, my studies, uh, we started the company and then we raised money. We uh, basically a few months after uh, finishing my MBA, uh, I, I was CEO of this company and, um, and we were fully functional. Um, and this was actually fantastic uh, because we started, uh, as you said, Deepak, actually the first, uh, um, the first, actually it was, a, in fact, the main reason why we started this company at the beginning, because we had the first implementation of this technology for vision restoration of blind. In fact, uh, what we do is, uh, is, uh, is, uh, is an emulation of the human eye. And, um, and then you may be familiar with the fact that actually the eye is not producing an image. In fact, the, this, the, the biological rate is, so, is not sending images at a fixed point in time to the brain like uh, any camera technologies is doing today, but it's actually sending only uh, relative changes, only dynamic information, only what is, uh, is, uh, is changing in the scene, what is not known by the brain. And this process is actually very interesting because it, it enabled uh, the, the retina to offload the brain from a lot of redundant information. Otherwise, our brain would be the size of this room. And in fact, in fact, uh, um, uh, just to, to understand how important is the role of the retina, you, you, need to, uh, you need to appreciate the fact that actually the brain is processing more than 90% of the, of the time visual input. If now the retina was not capable to pre-process this visual input, to only send metadata to the brain, again, the brain will be uh, extremely uh, overloaded of information and we will not be able to react in real time to dangers and to survive. In fact, the retina has been the organ in, in the human body that has been evolving uh, the most, in fact, compared to other, uh, to other parts. And this is completely different. When you think about that, uh, when the first time, uh, this group of research was, uh, was pitching to me the technology. Uh, you feel like, okay, this is, this is right, right? This, this, this technology is the right approach because by it, uh, it, and if biology has been doing for the past uh, uh, thousands of years, it means that there is a reason, right? And in fact, when you compare uh, our technology to what, uh, you know, we do with conventional camera, like the one you have on your phone or even the camera that is now sending uh, images over over the net but this this camera they they simply uh, send the pictures uh, at a fixed point in time right and this has been the case since actually more than a century in fact uh, uh, the idea of uh, of uh, the, the 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 cinema started um, uh, in the in the early uh, uh, Early as I mean last century, and actually the idea of photography started uh, in in, in 18, uh, 1850, 1865, right? Uh, so and um, and since then, actually nothing really changed, right? If you compare to the first uh, camera technology to what we do today, essentially we produce images at fixed point in time, which is uh, uh, which is of course uh, um, okay if you want to just uh, create a picture for for your for your humor consumption right for your eyes but in reality in reality you realize that uh, especially when you produce video you produce a lot of data which are redundant for example at this point in time a lot of uh, data coming from my background which is static uh, have been are, are sent over and over through the through the network uh, taking a lot of bandwidth and taking a lot of processing power to decode and code etc uh, etc et and uh, and especially now that we are entering this new era of uh, artificial intelligence machine vision right uh, we we are moving from uh, human consumption to machine consumption and this is where um, these conventional approaches are not really uh, efficient because first of all we produce a lot of data second we we uh, with a frame-based acquisition, right? You, you acquire images at a fixed point in time. So in between frames, there is no information. So if something moves very fast, right? You will not understand the, clearly the motion of my hand, for example. Uh, and, and third, there is another problem with conventional cameras that uh, exposure time is fixed. In fact, uh, uh, when, you took, when you take a picture, you know that you need to select the part of the scene you want to look at, especially when you have very very different lighting conditions, right? If now I, I move my camera 
towards the window, right, which is bright. You will see my face darker, right? Yeah, you see that it's changing because, uh, yeah, the camera needs to make a trade-off. Should I look outside the window or should I look at the face of Luca, right? Now it doesn't see my face <laughs> because probably most of, most of the scene is bright. So, so cameras make this trade-off and the eye is not making this trade-off. When you look at me in this moment, right, if you were actually really sitting with me in my room, you would probably see outside the window and my face both well at the same time because we don't make trade-off. And our technology doesn't, right? And that's great, for example, think of an autonomous driving application. If you are now driving through a tunnel, which is dark and outside is bright, but should, should uh, the car make a trade-off of looking uh, uh, at what is inside the tunnel or outside the tunnel? Uh, but certainly it has to be functional for both, right? Because otherwise you don't know where the danger is, is uh, whether it's inside the tunnel or outside. So. These type of trade-offs are not acceptable for safety reasons, for example. Uh, so our technology brings this, uh, this benefit of, uh, of, uh, uh, of having uh, uh, this wide dynamic range so don't, they don't, don't make trade-off of, of lighting conditions. All, all, all at the same time, right? So we, we, are, uh, we have this, uh, this technology that is, is fast, that um, is only detecting changes like the human eye and uh, with... Uh, uh, exposure time per, pic, per, per actually pixel that make uh, this dynamic range very, very broad. So we started actually five years ago with this technology and now it has been uh, since five years an incredible journey um, uh, of development of the company. We are about 100 people uh, and um, uh, we are based in Paris. Uh, we also have a few offices, uh, uh, one in Grenoble and then we have commercial offices in, in uh, in Japan, in China, and in the US to support our customer. And as you said, we are working in this area, various areas, not only um, the medical area, but also now more and more into uh, industrial automation, uh, autonomous driving, and, uh, and uh, consumer, consumer devices. Yeah, this technology which we have created, technology which we have created is, is definitely is, is the path breaking technology. Uh, because as you rightly mentioned here, our Zoom call would need far lower bandwidth if they would have been using your technology, right? Because we are, we are unnecessarily transmitting a lot of data, which is of no relevance to you or me. Uh, also, one thing which comes like, you know, when I was going through your technology and the great work you're doing, like, you know, it again reminds you that uh, the technology which mimics nature are generally the most efficient and effective. And most of the time, we human beings, we start with on the wrong side of the pole than the right side of the pole. But for example, let's take example of, you know, uh, the bullet train, right? So they were, they were having this challenge that when it comes out of tunnel, it was creating a supersonic noise, right? Which will create a small earthquake whenever the train is to pass. And they just went back to the beak of a kingfisher, right? And it eliminated the sonic boom, right? Similarly, like, you know, when you were trying to make a rate of flow, fly faster and more efficiently, only thing they were to go and look at the actually how the whale and its structure is. So if you see that, you know, the, 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 the whales, they have uh, uh, small uh, uh, protrusions on, on, on their uh, fins, which makes them very, very agile. And they are called, I think, uh, tubercles, uh, which, which, which makes engines, uh, like, you know, their fins very, very aerodynamic. And same thing when they started using in turbines. Suddenly you have that from the, the like, you know, the, the plain old turbines. It is far 40% more efficient and started using less of fuel. So you rightly said that we need to, be looking at nature for a lot of our solutions. Unfortunately, yeah. we don't do that. And uh, Lucas, that brings us to our first question, right? Uh, I, I would like to understand from you because the perspective you are having that the economy currently is going through a serious recessionary pressure, right? Both because of the COVID-19 and subsequent measures like lockdown, which in your country or my country we are facing. This would dry up the fund flow in private sector, limiting their capabilities for capital expenditure. At the same time, we see large disruption happening in industry dependent on human labors because you don't have people, the, the, the labor to work in your factories, leading to loss of business. In some case, which is very, very fatal to organization. Now, how do you see in this scenario, keenness of companies to embrace on the path of industry 4.0, which would be the biggest user or biggest captive customer for your sort of technology? And how do you see that like, you know, the, the reduced need of human intervention like labor would be like, you know, be having far more weightage 
and need for the large capital in, in, in injunction when you are looking at automation using your type of technology. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. I mean, uh, the, 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 the situation we are experiencing is very, is very exceptional, is very unique, and um, uh, certainly uh, we, 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 we see the impact uh, in, in, in the company because a lot of activities have been uh, slowing down. Um, nevertheless, um, yeah, we believe that um, we are in a, uh, with, a with, with our company, with our technology, we are in a good position because vision um, is something that um, uh, is, 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 is everywhere. There are today more than 40 billion cameras uh, installed and uh, actually the trend is to see more and more cameras uh, uh, in, in objects, in, in surveillance systems, in cars, in drones, etc., etc. And as you said, also in, in, uh, in Industry 4.0, in industrial automation, uh, people will look for more and more, more, and more cameras. And actually, uh, the, the current situation with uh, the, the, the COVID-19 is also imposing uh, now certain social distancing uh, uh, rules uh, that require, uh, in some case, some sort of automation. For example, uh, for example Amazon has been deploying uh, uh, thousands of cameras in their warehouses to monitor uh, distances uh, between uh, between operators, um, and some other companies are doing the same. Um, and so you will see, we we expect to see actually more and more uh, cameras deployed for um, smart flow analysis, people counting. Uh, already in the past, actually, we we have been uh, working in projects to. Uh, uh, for example, for lean manufacturing to better understand the working flow of people in, uh, in warehouses to optimize uh, the, 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 the working flow. Uh, we have been seeing actually uh, cameras deployed in uh, smart retail to, uh, to also understand customer behavior, for example. Uh, we have been uh, working some projects for, uh, for example, crowd management in, uh, in the entrance of subways, etc. So this type of usages uh, will become more and more common. Uh, understanding the occupancy of, uh, of uh, for example, parking houses, uh, etc. So, uh, and, and certainly, the coronavirus is actually uh, is probably uh, accelerating this trend. Uh, we, I was reading yesterday an article about uh, this new touchless uh, uh, need, right? That is, uh, uh, is 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 imposing, right? For example, now probably. You, you may expect application where uh, you can have human machine interface uh, without uh, touch to a screen, without interacting with a door, uh, etc. So this this is certainly requiring some sort of visual uh, visual input. Uh, so yeah, so uh, we expect uh, this to be an opportunity for 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 us. Um, so in industrial application, but also uh, in in some IoT, in some surveillance. Uh, autonomous driving as well. I mean, uh, uh, in particular, when we talk about autonomous driving, we are thinking uh, about application of autonomous uh, uh, robot delivery, for example. I mean, this is something that has been in the past uh, weeks, months growing as well uh, due to the coronavirus. So the, the delivery, the food delivery, for example, is it because restaurants have been closed, so people have been right. purchasing food uh, for, for delivery. So. There are companies that are now developing uh, uh, these fantastic uh, robots for delivery. And these robots, they navigate the environment using a mostly vision perception uh, system, which we are, uh, which we are, we are devol developing as well. So all this will, will, uh, will create a push for our technology. In fact, when we look at the, uh, what analysts are saying in our sector of image sensors, they don't expect actually a significant uh, impact uh, in uh, in in uh, in the sales of of conventional image sensor overall. That's great uh, insights. In fact, I'm working very closely as advising one of the company in robotics called Cognisip, and they are yeah. also like in trying to create a machine and human interface. And uh, they were also like a little bit of concern. So I said that like going forward, you need more interaction right, between humans and machines. So that's that's a plus point. But yes, for maybe for some period of time where the cash crunches happens in the companies and this stop writing checks for new innovations currently, you might have a little bit of turbulence, but uh, that's uh, the, the, the vision after turbulence is far, far bigger than what it could have been before uh, COVID. Do you agree to this, this, this hypothesis? Look, I, I, we, we are experiencing uh, 
a few, I mean, maybe a different type of behavior, right? So um, there are, it's true, there are companies, especially in Europe, that have been slowing down uh, activities because uh, physically people are not anymore in the offices or in the lab to, to work with our technology. Although we, we put in place certain uh, um, product strategies actually to deliver uh, to customer virtual product, meaning that uh, uh, it, it is, even if we don't, they don't get our camera physically, they can get uh, data and software tools to actually play uh, virtually uh, with, uh, with, with videos uh, and, and with our algorithm. So that's, that's to some extent, has been palliating this, uh, uh, this, this issue. Um, so we see, of course, uh, some activities that are, are, are slowing down, especially in company in, in industrial uh, automation application, but the, the, the large company we have been um, engaging with, especially in the consumer sector, um, actually they, we didn't see much uh, impact, although again, they have, been, uh, they have been all impacted because they, people are uh, in many cases working from, from home, but they, they uh, actually they kept uh, quite large investment, I believe, uh, in, in R&D, especially for uh, uh, disruptive uh, um, uh, technology projects. And so we didn't see a strong impact on the project they are, uh, they are doing with us, which is, uh, which is also a good sign. And sometimes actually, uh, we also uh, noticed a, a, an interesting behavior because um, maybe because now uh, companies have uh, uh, maybe less pressure on uh, short-term delivery, uh, we see some um, uh, on the R&D side, uh, which is in many cases our direct uh, uh, interlocutor, right, uh, is, is the R&D innovation group of large corporation. So they have maybe now more time to, to think about the next project, the next step. So actually, in some cases, we, we, we could even see an acceleration of, uh, of, uh, of the project, which we, we started before the COVID-19. Um, and this is mostly what I'm saying here is mostly related to what we do in Europe, in the US. On the other, on the other hand, um, we, 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 we could actually appreciate an acceleration of activities in China. Uh, there was a, clearly a, 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 a pause uh, during January and February, but uh, after end of February, uh, all the projects we, we, we were doing in China have been actually taking off again at, at an incredible high pace, um, as well as in Japan. So we are actually glad to see this, this development. In fact, we are currently investing in the area, hiring more and more people to support, uh, to support our customers. So that's for us was actually... News. I, would, I would like to like, you know, add one more point here, uh, very specific to what you have talked about. Uh, I'm not very sure that how uh, you are planning to operate in India. Uh, the interest in deep tech in India has become very, very substantial. And if you see that, like, you know, there used to be lag of uh, at least 10 years in new technology coming to India a few years back. Now, if you see today, right, you'll find that all the advanced technology generally, like, you know, the difference is six to eight months from Europe or America to India because of definitely the pressures of globalization and uh, uh, the type of economy we are having, right? So our economy, which is three and a half billion dollars, Right, and and substantial part of it is being in uh, industry manufacturing, and then actually like you know also like uh, uh, India is known for its software process, not very much in hardware, right? So those technology which you are working on, I believe there is a very very uh, good market for your technologies in, in India, and especially when we talk about vision technology, believe me, like you know, it's a holy grail, right? So whatever you do in artificial intelligence or machine learning, right, uh, some part of it you'll find it actually it will have some data sets coming from the the vision technology, right? And and where like, you know, the efficiency which you are bringing on table is fabulous. So I would request you that like, you know, look at India is a very, very prospective, strong market for you going forward. Please do that. But that brings us to like, you know, second question you talked about research in deep tech. Now I'm trying to put like, you know, a devil's advocate sort of question to you, right? Uh, the world is becoming uh, politically, right? Very, very uh, nationalistic. Right. Mm. So you'll find all the leaders talking about let's make India great or America great or China great. Right. You'll see a lot of uh, political posturing happening that can we create our own technologies. Right. People started seeing China as an example that actually they can survive without Facebook. They can survive without Google. 
and still they are doing well so now a lot of countries you will find that they also start saying that okay fine enough from us enough from china can we create our own local uh, tech environment uh, and try to do research which are more focused on local issues rather than going for a big ticket uh, research uh, how do you see the deep tech industry evolving in current times when actually like you know the priorities are getting reset what to research on how to research on right and how to collaborate so i would like to understand from you one do you think that collab global collaboration is going to reduce secondly in deep tech very much focus on deep tech and secondly uh, acceptance of technology from outside your own uh, country boundaries uh, do you think that these two factors would slow down the deep tech development yeah it's actually it's a very 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 good good point actually uh, going back to the, the just for a second to the answer I was giving uh, for your previous question before um probably the acceleration we 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 saw in china is uh, is also related to the fact that is also is probably mostly related to the fact that uh, china um uh, probably feeling this uh, isolation um from 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 the rest of the world and uh, uh and and uh, especially in in uh, when we talk about deep tech in our sector we talk about semiconductor china has been heavily uh, depending on uh, on uh, on semiconductor companies in uh, from taiwan from the us etc so uh, is is uh, is very known today that uh, china has been the government has been uh, investing and keeps promoting actually multi billion uh, um, investment initiative to, um, uh, to 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 grow the semiconductor industry in 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 this in the, in the country so and probably this was actually the reason why uh, in the past few months we saw this acceleration because uh, the companies we are we are engaging with they consider our technology a strategic one and they they decide actually to to invest time and resources to uh, to uh, understand the technology and to potentially adopt at a certain point in time so uh, to that ex to that extent actually we uh, we see a benefit maybe uh, as as a european uh, we we uh, are now sitting maybe in the middle between this uh, this tension that is uh, is, uh, is is raising between uh, between US and China so I, I hope for a while we can we can actually leverage it because we're actually working uh, with both uh, worlds um, so maybe in the short term I would say yeah there is a there is a uh, there is certainly a, a strong uh, uh, we see that investment in in deep technology uh, so there is a there is this willingness from from countries to to become more uh, more independent uh and especially in the area you know a semiconductor uh, ai uh, there is this uh, this this race uh, but um, i believe that overall um to really uh, reach certain level of of uh, uh, breakthrough innovation we need to play eventually uh, on a global scale so maybe uh, i hope this reaction is really uh, temporary uh, but um, research has always shown that uh, great innovation are innovation that comes from 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 uh, collaboration. So I hope this this phase will not will only be will only be temporary. Um, what I regret to see, nevertheless, uh, is the fact that, for example, uh, Europe is um, is not today playing as as one uh, one one continent, if you want. Uh, uh, because fine, maybe U.S. and China they uh, they they try to focus on the on their own, uh, but they have mass. They have they have they have um, uh, they have uh, they have a market. They have uh, um, also uh, huge investment potential to to grow research. Uh, and deep tech require a huge capital investment, right? So they can afford to do that. But Europe, uh, each single country cannot reach equivalent level of uh, of investment, right? So Europe. Uh, can reach the same the same uh, uh, investment uh, size only if we, it plays as a unique uh, as a unique organization as a unique group. So I, I, I regret to see not such a such a um, cross country uh, initiative. Although uh, we have been here in the past few weeks, some uh, some uh, some injection of, of of money coming from from EU. Uh, hopefully, on the research level, this will also be. Uh, be the case. Otherwise, to, it would be it would be challenging for Europe to keep uh, to keep the pace um, against uh, uh, 
US and, uh, and, and China. Now that's very, very well articulated. I also fully agree that Europe need to get its uh, act together because end of the day, if you see that uh, more than 70 to 80 percent of patents are now filed by US and, and China, right? And mm -hmm. if, if, if Europe doesn't uh, work together as a, a block, uh, you'll, you'll have uh, serious challenges coming forward because like country like India and uh, they are also trying to emerge right in, in technology landscape. And uh, yeah. so like competition is getting a little bit hotter. Uh, now that brings us to our question of like, you know, which area other than the vision tech do you see, right? You know, deep tech uh, opportunities there. So if you have come across the challenges which you believe that it's not your cup of tea, but you believe that uh, those who are working in deep tech area should be focusing on. So do you have some views on that? Yeah, deep technology, yes, for sure. We, we um, uh, another area where, where, where I see a great potential are um, uh, uh, so data center and uh, AI for data center, in particular, uh, uh, hardware, specialized hardware for, uh, for AI for data center. And, um, um, and the, reason, uh, the reason for me is, is the fact that actually um yeah we 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 are more and more connected uh we actually could see uh even in the past uh, uh, with the coronavirus i think uh, this has been even a, a, a race of of people being uh, being connected uh because i'm connected with you while my kids uh two of my kids are connected with the teachers at school and my wife is doing maybe a yoga <laughs> session <laughs> so, so the bandwidth here is exploding yeah. and uh, and uh, a lot of this, um, and, uh, and, uh, and and a lot of this data and uh, uh, need now to be transmitted, and some will be stored somewhere and processed in the in the in the in the in the data center, in the cloud, and, uh, and more and more services are attached to it, etc. Et so I don't think this is uh, so. This is a trend that is growing. Uh, apparently, the, the the power consumption of data center by now is exceeding the uh, the electricity bill of a country like uh, like Germany. Uh, and this is, is actually doubling every two years. Uh, so this is becoming the, one of the main contributors for, for, for pollution. Uh, so it's not sustainable. Uh, this is not sustainable. Um, so we need to find a clever way to, to, make this, uh, to make this sustainable. Because people are saying, okay, data is, data is becoming the new energy, the new oil, right, yeah. uh, of, of, the, of the century. But like the oil, uh, yes, everyone was excited about the oil because it was making our, our car running. But at a certain point in time, we realized that, ah, but it's also polluting, right? Um, and, and maybe we are not yet realizing that there is, a, there is a, also a, a side effect of, of all, all, the, all the benefit of having uh, this video chat with you and uh, Netflix, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, there is also uh, a, a carbon impact to it, so we need to. Uh, they, there is a great, I mean, to make this sustainable, this growth sustainable, because we will need more and more this type of uh, 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 interaction. We need to find a smart way to uh, to process, store data in the cloud, which is eco-friendly. I fully agree with you. So, just like when people say data is oil. Right, uh, we, we as a human beings, as a society, we did a big error by believing oil as our energy source, right? <laughs> and, and we got into the sick, bigger mess of the pollution. So I always tell people, don't say data is an oil because oil you consume once and it is not replenishable. Start seeing data right. as a soil. Soil, you sow one seed, right? You get one plant, you sow another seed, it's another plant. So start thinking about scenario where you see, start seeing data as a soil, not oil. And I fully agree with you that we'll have to become more sustainable. And Corona has told us that uh, if we don't take care of Mother Earth, she's not going to take care of us. So it's, it's very, very critical. And, and uh, so, Lucas, it brings us to something which is more personal to you. Uh, you are running a company which is in multiple countries, right, at different level of impact of Corona, right? So China had earlier, uh, Europe, Middle. <coughs> so... Uh, or Japan might be getting into it now, right? So that uh, I would like to understand from you on a personal perspective, as well as a CEO of a company, right, which is having uh, working in multiple geographies. How do you cope up with the COVID on a personal level? Like you rightly said, that actually working from home is a different ball game. Uh, you have been traveling globally. You have been interacting so much with people, and suddenly you are locked down. 
so it will have a personal crisis as well right so how you are coping and how your organization is coping with the covid yeah so personally yes i have been uh, in lockdown since mid of march i will start actually going to the office next week uh, i'm actually glad to 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 go back because i i want to uh, meet also my my team we have been uh, we have been actually trying to uh, to work uh, i mean as much as we could with using zoom using teams all these uh, fantastic tools which actually uh, we re we all realize that uh, we can do uh, i think we can do a lot uh, with uh, with uh, with video uh, video conference tools, uh, because I've been uh, since uh, I mean uh, since I started the company until this lockdown, I've been actually progressively traveling more and more. I was traveling more than fifty percent of my time. I was spending one week a month in in the US, one week a month actually in Asia, and um, and stepping back a little bit with uh, looking at my family now every day and spending uh, time with my kids in the morning to have breakfast, etc. Of course now. Uh, I, I enjoyed the lockdown. Uh, I really enjoyed the lockdown because I could uh, really appreciate this daily life with my family, which I, I, w I was having, of course, but maybe just over the weekend was, was a bit different. Um, it was more before my life with my family was sometimes uh, like, uh, like, a, like the time you have for, on vacation, right? It was not a daily life. The lockdown brought me back to a daily life with my family. So this is something I appreciate. and. Uh, and I learned that I, I, I need to, to do more. In fact, uh, uh, even if we will go back to some new form of normality, with these tools working remotely, is teaching us that we can, we can do a lot, uh, even if you, know, if you don't travel uh, as much, right? Uh, because maybe we, I don't know, I, I, I felt like uh, uh, we, we were actually creating some, uh, some habits uh, uh, in, in traveling uh, and maybe posing for us uh, certain, uh, uh, certain uh, obligations which were not in the end uh, as effective uh, as uh, you could see now that you are forced to work lockdown. And maybe because this lockdown is, fun is, 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 is fantastic in the sense that uh, it's a global experience for everyone. So I think this lesson uh, is not only for me, it's the lesson for everyone. So people will, uh, uh, will probably set different expectations those obligations I was talking before, maybe people will, will not uh, expect them any, anymore. So we, we will find a proper way to work uh, uh, from distance uh, in a more effective way. So that's, that's, uh, that's, that's a good thing. Uh, nevertheless, of course, uh, uh, working from the office is also very important because uh, there are certain things that you cannot do otherwise. Um, so I'm also looking forward to go back. Uh, uh, to, to meet my team and also to 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 start uh, working with the team. No, right, right, very well articulated. In fact, you will be surprised. Like you know, I've been doing a lot of discussions, talking at a lot of sessions, and uh, one thing people have always come up with me is that uh, senior management and middle management stress because of COVID, because the businesses are in constraints, and suddenly you are having another issues of when you are working from home, your your environment has changed, right? And, and going forward also, like, you know, things are not going to change too much. We'll have to live a very different life than what we used to live, right? I, I, I've seen people getting more addicted to travel than even liquor and the drugs, right? So though they call me, my friends, like, you know, holy shit, I have not been able to travel for the past two months. I used to be 22 days on the road. Now I'm not able to get comfortable with my family, right? You know, because I'm in the habit of like, you know, morning tea coming to my bed and not doing anything, just changing my clothes, going for the meeting. Now suddenly, actually, I have to do a lot of things. So, in fact, like you know, I'm coming uh, from uh, 1st of July, a series called uh, Business Monk. So, it, it's more how to mentally tune yourself in the current realities. So, I'll, I'll, I'll share some, some, some introductory videos for that with you also. Uh, that brings uh, Luca for our last uh, segment of this talk. Here, we are looking for a pointed advice from someone who's been there, done it, right? Working on a very, very cutting edge technology. Five years back, nobody would even thought about it. Right? You have started working on it and you have executed. You got customers, you got partners, you got investors, and now you are actually ready to fly. Right? So, as, as a startup which is currently or an entrepreneur which is currently in current crisis because of COVID, what would be the four or five uh, bullet point advice from you that they should be doing or not doing so that uh, they are able to pass through this COVID? Uh, uh, I'll say that uh, segment which is not that great, but once the things become a little bit closer to normal. They still have oxygen left in them to survive. So we would like to have your uh, pointed inputs on that. Yeah. 
to entrepreneurs or to investors? Both. Both. Ah, okay. Um, yeah. So what what we did actually uh, since the beginning of this situation, uh, despite the fact that actually the company raised money in the last year, so we're not actually in a, in a constrained cash position. Um, given the uncertainty of, 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 of what we were actually facing, we decided really to, to look very carefully on, 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 on the cash position. You realize that uh, things uh, uh, are getting slow, uh, slower than before. Uh, so whatever you were actually planning to, to deliver will, will, will get postponed, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, uh, as a startup, it's, it's key to, to uh, extend uh, the runaway as much as as you can um because things will get naturally slower than uh, than than before and nevertheless what is is also important for for a deep tech uh, startup for a company that is developing technology like ours to to make sure that uh, uh, you keep the focus on uh, on your uh, technology development or where you believe is the core value maybe you can de-emphasize uh, certain development that are not so key you take some risk, you make some decisions, you, uh, you streamline some, some operations, but you make sure that you keep creating value because, um, because yeah, as uh, many people said, right, uh, uh, if you're able to, to emerge uh, from this crisis with, uh, uh, with uh, this, uh, this, this, this strong value, which will be intact, then you will be in a better position in the market to, uh, to succeed. Uh, you need to keep strong, right? So first message is to, really uh, control cash focus uh, make sure that you keep developing your 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 core value with uh, with the company and for investors actually i understand the ones that are uh, i mean the first reaction we see from investors i i, I also heard my own investor that uh, first reaction is of course to protect their own uh, portfolio companies so a lot of actually vc they decide to uh, not to invest in new companies uh, true, but um, some actually are still investing in uh, in, in, in companies because uh, yeah, also past crisis to show that uh, great companies have been actually creating during uh, during crisis period. Because actually, is is I mean, what we have just been discussed. I mean, the the the, the coronavirus is shaking, uh, and, and it probably for for our generation, right? For most of the people who are living in the in this earth, this has been the first uh, uh, really uh, a unique experience that is not only shaking the economy, it's shaking us as a, as a human being, as a social animals, right? So there will be habits and and uh, and business models and that will be completely right changing and new access. So there is a great opportunity. Actually, there are I think um, many ideas that are. Uh, in the past weeks have been popping up, etc. So as an investor, I would be actually very, very happy now to explore and invest in the ones that uh, will, uh, will, uh, will, 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 will become the next, uh, I don't know, the next Google, the next Amazon, the next uh, Airbnb, etc. Because there will, be, there will be new great ideas now coming up. No, I fully agree. In fact, like, you know, our generation is having bigger responsibility because we are the only generation we have seen pre-digital, post-digital, and we'll be the generation who would have seen pre-corona and post-corona. So, exactly. <laughs> so Luka, we are having an exciting time. Um, uh, like you, I am also a big optimist who believe that the world would be a better place going forward. Maybe this was a lesson we needed. Uh, maybe not that in that harsh way, but maybe like, you know, it is going to create far more opportunities than challenges for all of us. Uh, thanks a lot for the time and it was uh, awesome talking to you. I learned a lot and I'm very sure that audience will gain a lot out of it. Look forward to collaborate with you going forward because I believe that is the way forward post-corona. And uh, thanks a lot. Stay safe. Indeed. Stay safe, everyone. Bye-bye.